to this word. All of you that he prays for, and, and he's a seasoned man of God. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. 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 All right. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash bitter roots. Mm, mm, mm. The bitter roots. Bitter roots. Amen. Some folks say roots, but it's spelled roots. Roots. Amen. Bitter roots. Bitter roots. It's going to make a lot of sense to you, but a lot of things that we're dealing with right now are because something is wrong with our roots. Amen. Amen. And you know, when you got bad roots, you just kind of got to dig it up and fix it. Amen. 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 Things that we've been through, things that I know y'all said, man, you preach about this all the time. Yes, I do. Because I want a church with people acting right and not acting out. Amen. Amen. When your roots are bad, you act out. You make other people suffer because of what other people did to you. And we deserve better. I deserve better. My wife, we deserve better. You shouldn't be treating us bad because the last church you was at, you got, you got hurt. Amen. Oh, an old boyfriend dumped you. Now you have a cantankerous disposition. Old girlfriend shot you to ghost. Do they still say that? Just didn't show up? We just call that shooting the ghost. Shot you to ghost. You still mad? You missed your prom when you was young. And all your dresses now look like prom dresses. But that's a bitter root. You didn't get past that. Amen. You could have trauma in your childhood that makes you revert back to childhood. And you wonder why you got a trail of stupid decisions, they, they, decisions the 12 year old would make. And that's when you got hurt. I know, I'm, I, hey. Yeah, that's a 12 year old makes those kind of decisions. What happened when you were 12? You were raped, molested, you were abandoned, you were hurt. Something happened. You can't move past it because roots are holding you there. You can't be a good church member with bitter roots. Amen. Eventually you're going to get mad at me because I preached something that you thought I was talking about you. And I'm talking about roots, period. All roots. All bitter roots. The movie roots. No, I'm just kidding. All roots. <laughs> but that was Amen. But that's the problem with most people right now. Bitter roots. Those of us that have had a true born again experience are on the actual course that God intended for us. Amen. A true born. What is a true born again experience? I got an opportunity to teach the teenagers last week. Hey, teens. I enjoyed it, too. It just brought back memories, Jay Brian. I felt like your age. Felt it, it brought back memories. Me and my wife were in there just like we were back in the old church. We had fun. But I was able to teach them about the born-again experience, not just being saved because their parents are saved. Amen. And I'm sure Jay teaches that, but I was able to reiterate it in probably a different way. But just to let them know, you can't go off your parents' salvation. Are you saved? Would you be coming to church if they don't come? Would you be saved if they weren't? So you can't take a piece of their spirituality and try to run with it. You have to have your own born-again experience. And I'm inclined to believe that it's even more than just saying I believe. Because the Bible tells me that Simon the sorcerer believed also. But a few ticks down the way, he saw what they were doing and he said, hey, can I buy this? And Peter, was it Peter? I think it was Peter told him, said, hey, man, there's a root of bitterness. There's something in you that's not right. He wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. He didn't have a born again experience. I'm 
to even say this. I felt my born again experience. I felt a change come over me. I felt a noticeable difference from the way I was. My eyes and my eyesight changed. When the power of God got a hold of me. So you need to seek a born again experience. Then you won't want to do the stuff you used to do. You can't glue the gospel to who you used to be. There needs to be a change. An experience. And nobody can take an experience away from you. Amen. I used the blind man as an example last week. And I told him, I said, the man, the, the blind man, they came up with all that foolishness. Because, you know, they believed Jesus was a false prophet and believed he was the devil and all of that. So they came up to him and, you know, he was blind and he could see. They was like, hey, man, you can see, huh? He was like, yeah, I can see. They said, well, give glory to God because this man right here is a devil. Talking about Jesus. And he said, look. I don't know if he a devil or not. I don't know if y'all telling the truth or not. All I know is I was blind, but now I see. You can't take that experience away from him. That's why you got to have a born again experience. Because in this hour, the devil can't take your born again experience away from you. How's the devil going to stop you if you've been with Jesus? How's the devil going to stop you if you felt his presence? How's the devil going to stop you? This don't have nothing to do with what my message is, but that's all right. I needed to go there, Deshaun. I needed to. Because it's the word. You need to have a born again experience. Amen. I'm not going to do this with all the bullets. I just had to. <laughs> Those of us that have had a true born again experience are on the actual course that God intended for us. This does not come without testing, trials, progresses, and failures. We all have sinned and will continue to error in some way. That means you're going to sin again. I know some of y'all are sanctimoniously sanctified and you believe that when folks sin, they're not saved no more. But that's not, that's not the truth. When we sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Make us new again. Amen. Anybody had to be made new again? I'm talking about after you got saved, you had to be made new again. Amen. Oh, that's the word. First John 1 and 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So anybody in here saying they have no sin, the truth is not in them. They're deceived. Amen. That's why you can't talk about other folks sin. Get somewhere and shut up. Amen. Falling in this life does not mean that your life is over. But it can make it more difficult than it has to be or even shorten it in some cases. Amen. Amen. So falling don't mean it's over unless you fall into some molten lava or something. <laughs> why molten lava? I don't know why that was on my mind. I just think of the worst case of falling. You're not getting up. You're not getting up. No, that's it. Why are you near lava? That's the question. Where are you? But <laughs> it can make it more difficult. So falling don't mean it's over, but it can make it more difficult than it has to be and even shorten your life in some cases. Though the Holy Spirit comforts us, there are trials and tribulations that we are suffering through because we just blew it in certain areas. Yes, Amen? Amen? That stuff we got now, you just blew it. Amen? Yes, 
Some of y'all got child support. Ah, just blew it in that area. Amen. So what do you do? Pay it. Pay it. Tell them how to pay it. Pay it. Do what you got to do. Amen. Pay it. Side job, third job, whatever you got to do, you just got to pay it. Uber, Lyft, Eats, they got all this stuff. Now you can get money to pay your child support. And you got to pay it because you did it. That's the decision you made. Amen. I mean, oh, that old devil, then when you see your son, the old devil, he ain't the devil. You did that. So you just pay it. Can I, can I tell the truth in here? Yeah, so these are decisions we made. You may have gotten divorced and wish you hadn't, but they done moved on. You got to live with that. You just blew it in certain areas. Romans 6 and 20. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? You got no fruit from that. Just bad stuff. For the end of those things is death. And you got to live with it. But it's okay. The spirit of the Lord can make it better because he made you better. So he'll make the whole situation better because when he makes you better, he gives you a better outlook. Amen. I know I'm preaching. The Bible gives us many examples of people that failed. And cause their lives to be harder, right? David, he made his life. Did he make his life hard? Yeah. The sword never left his house. He murdered that man, Uriah. The sword never left his house. His own son chased him down and tried to kill him his entire life. Everybody he got under. The spiritual authority he was under tried to kill him. The sword never left this man. Boy, that was a messy story right there. But there's a reason God left it in the Bible. David, Samson, Moses, Noah, Lot, Abraham, all of them made decisions that caused permanent scars on their lives. Right? We talking about the heroes in the faith. They made some, they, they made some bad calls. Though they did great things for God, they lived with pain and suffering because of the bad decisions they made. The Bible tells us their failures because we ourselves are prone to failure as well. The Bible tells you their failures because you're going to fail. Amen? You gonna fail. First Peter 4 and 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Don't suffer because of bad decisions. Amen? Bitterness is the internal root of most folks' failures. Harboring hurt from your past births bitterness which in turn causes you to be a ticking time bomb. A bitter person is a danger to themselves and others because if their anger, in their anger, they could blow up and harm many in the process. Amen. Amen. Most of the folks pastoring and lead ministries right now are bitter. They've been offended. Yeah. Yeah. And people are gravitating to them because they themselves are offended. But the blind can't lead the blind. You'll never get healed if you're following somebody that's not healed. Amen. A bitter person is a danger to themselves and others. Hebrews 12 and 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up does what? People are troubled by bitterness. And bitterness don't mean you got the bass mouth and just walking around. No, no, that's not what that means. That means you feel a way about a person because of something they did to you. You can't hide that because it'll bleed into how you treat other people. And it'll bleed in how you react to other people. It says that if it's springing up, it'll trouble you. And then thereby many will be defiled. 
bitterness leads to a lot of problems because to hide bitterness, you must cover it with something else. Religion is usually the go-to for most bitter people because they can judge the sins of others. <laughs> yeah, that's the go-to, religion. Because in religion, I can judge the sins of others and condemn other folks and torment other folks to let my bitterness out. That's why they like the church. Yeah, they want to set up shop in the church. Because they get to judge, or they think they get to judge the sins of others. Make them feel better about their bitterness. They get to judge the sins of others in the name of God to feel better about their own shortcomings. Unfortunately, most churches and ministries today were started because of bitterness against former ministries and church hurt. Yeah, the internet lets you start a church. You don't have to have any qualifications. You can start a ministry online and your ministry is set up just against some other ministry. That's your whole ministry. God called you to attack somebody else. That's what you do day and night. You attack somebody else. And it's somebody that you was with. And you believed it until they told you something you didn't like. Now if God called you to attack somebody, wouldn't, he, wouldn't you be attacking them from jump? Or did you get an epiphany? <laughs> All of a sudden, God has called me to take this person down. <laughs> the internet lets folks do whatever they want to do. I put up a post this morning just telling folks, man, don't be slamming your family and stuff on, online. When you get mad, don't make a post. They try to be slick with it and don't call a name or something. And somebody didn't give you some money, and you tried to borrow some money, you don't call a name. Um, see, love helps people when in their times of need. And, and, and you know, I, I woke up this morning and God spoke to me and said, I will send you people that love you, that will help you. <laughs> Why do people do this? Why? I had one lady hit me up and said, you yeah, know, I just, the motherhood message, the womanhood message, of modern, she said, you know, I just can't receive any of it. I said, none of it? <laughs> you know, I mess with folk every now and then. I get the spirit of mess with them. None of it, nothing I said was beneficial. But you know, I just, I just, there's just a correction. What if the man is trash? And she started dogging the man out. I said, Father's Day is coming. I'm going to level the playing field. But this is a mother's message. She's going to do it to me. Oh, so you can't receive from me. No. She said, you can't receive from me. I said, no. For two reasons. I don't know you. And you're a woman. <laughs> Block. <laughs> Bible say you need to go home and let your husband teach you. That's my Bible say. But you don't need to be trying to teach me. Look at somebody. Oh, he just arrogant. No, I'm not arrogant. That's what the Bible said. Said so I suffer. I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over me. You ain't gonna usurp authority over me, and, and you mean and cancel the word I preached? You better do that to your husband. He liked that. He married you. Amen. Somebody didn't like that this morning. That's okay. And you well, you came. You put on your clothes and came to ABC. That's what you did. <laughs> bitterness leads to a lot of problems because to hide bitterness, you got to cover it with religion. 
And unfortunately, most churches and ministries today were started because of bitterness against former ministers and church hurt. This folk mad at my wife right now. now how many of y'all know my wife? Just, you, you know my wife. If you mad at her, you mad at God. Because she don't do stuff to just, that's not how she rolls. But she told a couple of women, no, I can't allow you to teach that to the P31. Amen. Well, it's other women teach it. Well, those are women I picked. Amen. And I didn't pick you. Amen. Boy, them folks started a whole internet page. Amen. Yeah, because they can't teach. Amen. But there are other places you can go. At church, you can go, you become the assistant pastor as soon as you join. <laughs> I've had them send it to me and throw shade at me. Brothers, oh yeah, see what you didn't allow at ABC. Now I'm the senior pastor at the Greater Mount Calvary Rock by the side of the road. <laughs> missionary <laughs> Baptist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Here is the license, and this was my installation. Here's a video clip of my installation service. A video clip? You said a video. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't allow me there to, 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 to really flourish, so God sent me here. Well, why did he even send you in the first place? Man, so he knew to send you there, but he didn't know you shouldn't have been here? Oh, crazy. Quit blaming stuff on God. Man, that's how you feel. You a messy, nasty man. You are a female man acting out of your emotions. You old emotional he emotion. He we real men in here. Well, Dr. Carter said, he said, he's looking around, he's like, well, nobody better not try nothing in here. He said, because I see a whole bunch of men with pasts. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them just got saved. <laughs> it's real men in here. Amen. We ain't gonna have no punk fight if something jump off. There's men in here. Amen. And so if you can't handle rebuke or somebody straightening you out or telling you, hey man, this and that's what I'm saying. What kind of job are you gonna have if you can't receive from an authority? Can't nobody tell you nothing? Pastor, I just believe that I should be the next artist in the studio. Say, brother, your rapping is trash. You need to never do that again. I told what, brother? That <laughs> well, he asked me. Tell me now, be honest. I said, you want me to be honest? Do you really want me to be honest? Man, please be honest. I, I need to know. Well, what you need to know is... Don't quit your day job. And get a night one. As long as you don't have time to record nothing else. But did you listen to it? Me and my son listened to it and then I threw it out the window. I ejected it and threw it out the window. On the freeway. I thought the birds needed it more than I needed to be listening. Look, if somebody think that's cruel, you shouldn't have asked me. And I'm trying to help you from a life of pain and shame, brother. You better listen to me. You better listen. Folk have all kind of plans when they join this church. Amen. But these people draw bitter members to themselves and cover their own hands with the blood of others. If not dealt with, bitterness can cause you to blow it in this life and the next. Matthew 7 and 
uh, 22. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devils? In thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. What? People was doing the work. Had a church. Preaching. Ministering. Casting out devils. Prophesying. Judas was casting out devils. He was right there. But something was wrong with his heart. He had bitterness in his heart. Enough bitterness to make him betray the son of God. So you think folks ain't going to mess with you? Man, I did all this in your name. Yeah, but you were bitter. And you hated people. And your whole ministry was set up to attack and destroy people. And God named the things that he hates. He told you what he hates. You think you're going to heaven doing what he hates? Bitterness causes us to strive in the wrong direction. Those pictures, those was pastors. The Hebrew Israelites was on them pictures. Can I go back? Let me see. Yeah. So this is a pastor right here. And she pastors wearing, oh, Lord. All right. Come on now. Ah, look at that. White church. But she, uh, she pastors looking like that. And she wears us tattoos out. And she says, I'm called to reach the people that look like me. First of all, you ain't called. Amen. Second of all, put, some, put a shirt on. Amen. Now, everybody got tattoos. And, you know, some folks got them or whatever. But we don't, we're not advertising them. Amen. And we're not promoting them. Amen. We regret th that life and those decisions. Amen. Amen. Everybody regrets getting them. Amen. Don't you regret it? Amen. You regret it. So we're not going to promote it. Then this dude next to him just mad. And then the Hebrew Israelites, we know what they're about, right? Their whole ministry is bitterness. That's the only reason they assemble. Bitterness. They're bitter. Bitter. Too bitter to put some money together to buy a building. They got to be on the street. Brother, that's too bitter for me. It's hot. It's hot out here. I ain't wearing all that felt and all that cur them curtains and drapes and Cadillac seat covers and all that stuff y'all got on. That stuff is hot. It's crush velour. And I get, brother, you can't be a Hebrew. It's like in Texas. Y'all don't have a tank version of it? Where's the wife beater, the, the purple wife beater? I, bruh, we got to trim it down. Oh, hot tassels at the bottom. That's hot. That just look hot. Yeah, but they don't want rules. They don't want regulations. And they need somebody to blame for all of their bad decisions. So they want to blame the white man. And then they want to claim supremacy over... All people. By calling and considering themselves chosen. Amen. Amen. Y'all know we teach against that foolishness in here now. Amen. As a brother in here came on my Twitter the other day trying to call me out about this stuff and I hope you here listening to me. Do that again and then you gonna have something to say, bro. That's my Twitter account. Whoever, wherever you are. Amen. That's my Twitter. You don't come on my Twitter and threaten me and tell me who I need to be saying, preaching to and talking about. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Brother, this is heresy. Negro land, heresy. All that junk is heresy. We don't teach heresy in God's church. We teach truth in God's church. Brother, you got a membership at the wrong church. You need to go somewhere and take your family with you. That's what you need to do. I don't want to waste my energy having to block nobody. I had to block him. 
Brother, I shouldn't even have to read and do none of that. Over this foolishness. This new junk. This junk just started. Bunch of dudes mad about child support done got together and went. But you better get on somewhere. I believe every word of the Bible. And Jesus died for all men. White, black, Mexican, whoever. Every man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever is whosoever. Better phone a friend, bro. <laughs> Bitterness causes us to strive in the wrong direction. God has set our course by his spirit. And if we follow him, we learn to follow and not strive. That's when you can put the strive down. What is the strive? Just trying to impress people. You shorten your life when you live to impress people. You bring sickness and disease on your life when you live to impress people. So we give up our selfish ambitions, our selfish plights, and our selfish agendas because they were created by us to hide deep-rooted bitterness in our hearts. Striving with bitterness is like lighting the fuse of a bomb. Sooner or later, it's going to blow you up. Proverbs 6 and 17, God, he says the stuff I don't like. He said, these are the things I hate. Six things. He said, no, seven things I hate. A proud look. That's the Hebrew Israelites right there. Amen. You think you something? The proud look. A lying tongue. Shut up if you wasn't there. Amen. You don't know folks' business like that. You could be guilty of lying, having a lying tongue. Amen. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness. That's the person that wasn't there but talking like they were there. And he that does what? He that is trying to ruin the church. You trying to stop a ministry by sowing discord because you're upset. That's bitterness. The roots of bitterness. Got five of them and then I'm going to let y'all go. Amen. But I done got mad. Help me, huh? I just don't like that. That's foolishness to me, man. We a church and I'm a pastor. And you're going to be a member here, you're going to respect that. Go back where you came from if you don't know how to do that. Roots of bitterness. lust James 1 and 15 when then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death if you got a lust problem you're probably bitter that's why a person that was sexually abused when they get older they have a tendency to have sexual dysfunction in their lives or, or be uh, promiscuous are different things. Why? Because the bitterness from what happened to them is driving them to lust or driving them to the same perversion. So if you don't get healed of something, you'll find yourself doing what you're bitter about. We are tempted when we are drawn away of our own lust. This lust came in because of our desire to feel a certain way about ourselves. Listen. So in essence, the root of bitterness is the culprit and causes us to seek out sinful acts to feel comfort or pleasure in place of pain or displeasure. And lust don't have to be sexual sin. 
Lust can be your lust for things. You can lust for things to feel better about yourself. Yeah, so folk can't have a conversation with you without hearing about what you're about to buy, what you're about to get, what you're about to drive, where you're about to go. Man, I'd be like, all right, dude, golly. I said hi. Oh, brother, then when I finish this, man, I'm going to get you. Man, I see your car faster, man. I, I'm coming up. I'm, I'm going to get you. In a, I'm going to get you in a minute. What you got to do? What, that, what does my car have to do with you? If I didn't know you, I'd be driving it still. So don't do it. But that's, that's because of bitterness. You're bitter because you grew up without things. You grew up and people had things. Or you grew up with hopes and dreams and none of them came true. So now you got to embellish every conversation with the lust of the things that you desire. Man, I'm preaching in here. Yeah, we always talking about sexual sin, but we ain't never talking about getting hemmed up by brother I'm going to get. We be trying to fellowship and have a good time, and now you got to talk about everything. Sister, I'm going to get. She can't pay you a compliment without talking about herself. Oh, Sister Sabatha, boy, I like the way you rock it. You know, I have my... I, my, I, my, I, shut up! Man, just say you like it at us. Good gracious. Why, why it gotta be about you? <laughs> Boy, we ain't comparing stuff, man. I tell Elder, you know, we go certain places and I, he got to act, like act like a bodyguard. Because we know this dude, he going to have to compare himself to you. So he going to say this and that. And they'll always say, you won. <laughs> you won. <laughs> You're the king. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that's lust too. When we begin to use lust to feel better, we put ourselves in dangerous positions that could lead to life-altering or life-ending consequences. Yeah, you keep lusting, get out there, get AIDS, you're going to die. You get herpes, you never get rid of it. Yeah, that's the sexual sin. The other, just lusting after the world, you're going to get some payments that you can't make and you're going to die. You're going to die every month on the first. Every time that bill roll around. Oh, oh my God. Lord help me. Now you was trying to show out. You told him you was going to get what the pastor had. That's your house? No, that's what the mall cost. Brother, what was your credit score? But you'll have life altering consequences. I am pre y'all, this is this is wonderful. This is awesome. Y'all know it is. This is helping you. Unforgiveness, root of bitterness. Mark 11 and 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that the Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Y'all, that's not an option. So did you know a lot of people, man, 50% of the people out there probably, God has not heard one of their prayers in years. I pray and things don't happen. Like I see other people and they be praying and God does it. But when I pray, nothing happens. Have you forgiven everybody? Do you have something against someone? Because the Bible tells me. That God is not going to forgive you if you don't forgive. He said, when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. forgive. It's easy to know when you have unforgiveness, too. You hate somebody. You touch it. <laughs> Can't stand touchy, folks. 
How you doing? How you doing, sis? I'm all right. What's wrong? Last week, you had walked by me, and you didn't say nothing to me. I'm sorry. Now I got to forgive and go before the Lord so my prayers can be answered. You messing with my prayers now. Touch yourself. Sullenness in men. Yeah, men are sullen for unforgiveness. Yeah, I've seen men become strong men in their homes once they forgave their wife. They carry unforgiveness for their wife and don't care no more. She said, get out on the porch and get out of here. He, just... he don't care no more. He lost. He just don't care. He don't want to talk to her because any conversation, she's going to try to beat him down and win. He can't communicate with her because she's unreasonable. Her bitterness is turning him completely off and he's become sullen. He don't want to deal with her. Right with this old preacher one time, I said... I was riding with him. He looked at me and said, man, you wondering why I let my wife just run all over me. I said, well, you know. <laughs> now, now, that you've, now that you've brought it up, <laughs> I wasn't going to say nothing, but now that you started the conversation, but I mean, what I just saw in the church, I mean, I, you know, it made me a little uncomfortable. He said, I, I don't care. It ain't worth it. He said, it ain't worth it. He died like that. Jezebel and women, that comes from bitterness. Something happened to you to make you bitter. And now because you're bitter, you have Jezebel, the spirit. You want to lord over men because men did something to you. Men hurt you in some way. Ungratefulness, harsh criticisms, holding grudges, stubbornness, shiftlessness. They just won't do nothing. Won't do nothing, won't wake up early, just jive. Yeah, because of unforgiveness, mood extremes. You know, and sometimes you didn't forgive yourself. So you are literally, spiritually, and subconsciously punishing yourself. Yeah, you're punishing yourself. Mood extremes, disrespect are all signs you are harboring unforgiveness towards someone. This is not dealt with, you will error for sure. You will do something that will mess up your life and you will have to live in a hard place because your heart was hard. Man, living in a hard place is hard, y'all. Oh my goodness. Don't let folks think, make you think they're tough. Nobody's tough. None of us are tough. Only Jesus is tough. If we don't have the blood of Jesus flowing through our veins, we ain't tough. So these folks are having nightmares about what they did to somebody. If you don't deal with it, mess your life up. And when your heart is hardened by unforgiveness, your prayers do not work. Can I keep going? Generational curses might be one of the most powerful messages preached at this church, that series. If you need it, you need to go check it out. But because I preached it, it's like, man, generational curses are so real. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinances of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So if you're resisting the truth that I'm preaching now, you're going to receive damnation. An easy way to blow it is to copy someone that blew it before you. <laughs> Curses were birthed right in your family because someone was bitter. African Americans, curses was birthed in most of our families because a lot of our people, generations up, were enslaved. And most of them were Christians, but they didn't know how, a lot of them didn't know how to deal with the bitterness, and it passed down through the family. Yeah. But it has to stop with you. Amen. Amen. You don't have a slave master. 
you're free. So you need to behave like you're free. And you need to love white people, black people, all kind of people. Love them all the same because you're free. Amen. We're not living under the slave masters. They all dead. And only God can judge them. Amen. But curses were birthed in your family because someone was bitter. These curses will hunt you down and try to force your hand at repeating the negative past of those before you. My dad told me some things the day before he died. And he told me some things that he had done and told me, don't repeat this. Don't, don't do that. Don't repeat it. I want you to be better than I was in this area. So don't do it. But now I have to fight to not do it. Because it keeps revisiting. Yeah, it keeps revisiting because that's what curses do. It'll keep revisiting and you got to keep telling it. No. Yeah, that's real. These curses will hunt you down and try to force your hand at repeating the negative past of those before you. If your mother or father was embittered, you will battle with the same things. The power of God helps us overcome these generational curses. However, if we are not fighting against them, then we are submitting to them. I know I'm preaching. This is great. This is great stuff. Amen. Fearfulness. Revelation 21 and 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Wait a minute. The fearful? That's with the whoremongers and the idolaters and murderers? Yeah. When a person is bitter, they become fearful. They carry fear and distrust into every new situation and circumstance because of the past trauma that embittered them. So whatever happened to you makes you carry your distrust and fear into every new relationship and you end up sabotaging good things. Good friends. Good family. Good fellowship. Because of what happened before, you're carrying that everywhere. That's fearfulness. You're afraid that it's going to fall apart, so you sabotage it before it has a chance to. In other words, they cannot find a place of peace because they carry fear with sabotages, which sabotages all potential good scenarios. They have a history of church hopping, job hopping, family hopping, friend hopping. They just hop us. Always happen. Always happen. Yeah. Why are they hopping? They're fearful. Their instability is based on the fear they have because a root of bitterness has sprung up in their heart and they feel everyone will hurt them like they did or whoever they is did. Harboring fear is a sin, and those that cannot get free from it will not see Jesus. Yeah, this is a hard word, I know, but it's the truth. Amen. Sometimes you got to force yourself to be around people. Amen. Force it. Force it. Force it. Hey, won't you come hang on? I don't know. You know, Force it. Yeah, I'm going to go. Then you end up having a good time. Once you get over that initial, but you can't base Future things on past things. Or you'll continue to sabotage opportunities where God is trying to bring people around you to help you. Help you overcome it. That was me, man. I was, I was an introverted introvert. I was introverted inside the introversion. I didn't like people at all. I didn't. I didn't want to be around them. No. And God called me the pastor. I was like, what? Huh? I'm not fit for that. And then God had to take me through some things. Yeah. I got real sick. And when I got real, you know, you get sick enough, you miss folks. 
Tell them, Elder, you miss folks. You want them around. Then I start thinking all the opportunities I've had around people. Man, I got to get past this. And when you isolate yourself, you're going to get in trouble. You know why? Because you're there. You, you there. And ain't nobody else there to stop you. You not going to stop you because you are you. Sometimes you need people around for balance and accountability. Amen. Boy, the pastor's preaching in the, t in the place today. I know I am. Amen. Get over that fearfulness now. Oh, and this is the worst one. Stubbornness. When you were young, if your mama called you stubborn and whooped you, you're probably stubborn now. You need to get delivered from it. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. You know, correction is only grievous to him that don't want to do right. And he that hateth reproof shall die. You know, the Bible ain't playing with us. The Bible is not playing with us. God killed folks for sport in the Old Testament. He killed every he killed folks for something one person did. David, because you numbered the people, I'm gonna kill a whole bunch of y'all and just kill them. Look at somebody. What kind of God is that? A good God. Lord, I love a God like that. And I ain't arguing with nothing he feel like doing. That kind of God, I'm, I hate. I'm in agreement. <laughs> I'm not one of the ones, Lord, <laughs> that is against thee. Not no God like that. I don't understand that. I don't understand that conversation. What kind of God? Which is the kind of God that'll kill you? Ooh, I ain't talking like that. <laughs> Man, you better take the bass out your voice. <laughs> <laughs> bitterness leads to stubbornness and this is a foolproof way to err warning comes before destruction and God loves you enough to send help before you shipwreck he always sends help always sends help whether you prayed for it or not he sends something to try to stop your crazy self every time Every, you can look back, there's a history of God trying to help your craziness. He will send you words of wisdom and admonishment through your spiritual authority so you won't mess things up. That's what these sermons are. Right now I'm preaching to somebody that was planning at 5 o'clock today to shoot dice at the dice shack. <laughs> You can shoot dice at home, but not at the dice shack. There's all kind of revelings going on at the... Yeah, somebody going to the Cliff Club for Memorial Day. Yeah, and I'm preaching this message, now you're convicted. Amen. Amen. Yeah, God is sending you a warning. Don't be stubborn. He will send you a voice of reason and even allow you to escape the consequences at times. Sometimes he lets you, you know, okay, this time. And each prayer get louder and louder every time you do it. Lord, this time, no, Lord, this time, you know, this is the last time. And then the next time, oh, Lord, this is the last time. What you gonna do the next time? You just gotta get a bugle and blow it. <laughs> 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 
but he will send you a voice of reason and even allow you <laughs> have to blow the show for. Ooh. <laughs> Here I am. Like I don't I don't even want to say it again. Just ooh. <laughs> I'm tired of saying it. Uh, he, he will send you a voice of reason and even allow you to <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> wait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but he will send you a voice of reason and even allow you to escape the consequences that time. But if you avoid leadership or elect to defy godly authorities, you will blow it for sure. You got a pattern of leaving leadership when you don't agree? When they tell you something that's good for you but you don't like it? You're going to do something dumb. Bitterness is going to be the end of you. Summary. No one is perfect. And we all have scars from our past that we wish we could erase. There are things we have done before we believed. And after we became believers that we regret and wish we could do over. Anybody did something after they became a believer that you wish you could do over? Yeah, man, this is real life. We live in real life, man. That was dumb of me. So there are things before you got saved and after you got saved that you regret and wish you had a do-over. But thank God for grace and mercy in the time of need. Though God is willing to forgive us, some of us, are willing, aren't willing to forgive others. We have allowed unforgiveness to manifest through bitterness and are facing situations that could possibly spoil our chances. God does not hear us if we do not forgive. And unforgiveness puts us on an alternate path in this life. On this path, there is no safety. And we are forced to live insecure and void of God's direction. Without God's direction, we are on a course that leads to our own destruction and the harming of others. Ephesians 4 and 31 says, let all bitterness, all bitterness, look at somebody say all bitterness. That's all of it. That's the bitterness you don't know is still there. But this message has shown you that there is still some. All bitterness and wrath Anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath what? Forgiven you. Everyone stand to your feet. Did this bless y'all? You know, I don't want to alarm nobody, scare nobody. Sometimes I have to come out of character to fuss at somebody for doing something stupid. And that's what I did, but that's not for everybody unless you're guilty. Amen. But the, this message, though, is so important because you could be carrying something and traces of it and remnants of it and different things. It could be against your own mother and father. It could be against an old pastor, an old church member, someone. And God wants that out, all of it, all bitterness. He wants every bit of it out because it's going to cause you to sabotage a good thing you have here Amen. and a good thing you have at home sometimes and a good thing you have in your family sometimes. It can be sabotage because you're carrying anger, especially if your parents divorced. You would really need to check that in your heart because that's one of the ones that most people think it's okay or you got past it and you didn't. It changes all your future decisions and how you even look at marriage and family. So all of these various things that are going on, y'all, listen, if we're going to be who God wants us to be, we got to be clear of bitterness. Amen. So I'm going to open up the altar now. If you want God, if you want prayer for this, Lord, just I want to make sure I'm not carrying anything against anybody. 
anything against family, friend, wife, husband, ex-husband, ex-wife, children, father, mother, whoever. Old girlfriend, old boyfriend, old relationship, failed relationship, old church, my old pastor, pastor's wife, whoever it was. Somebody spoke something, said something, did something, didn't agree with you, and it's still there. And then an old bitter believer, the bitter believers council, call you <laughs> to get you to leave the church. And the only way they can do it is if they attach to bitterness that's already there. You got to make sure I'm clear of this, man. I'm clear of, I ain't carrying this stuff. I'm going to do what God is telling me to do. I'm going to be where the truth is being preached. I'm going to be where God is doing his thing in this last and evil day. I'm going to be present. And I'm going to see Jesus with my brothers and sisters. Amen. That's my prayer for you. But if it's just me and my family, we're going to see Jesus together. Amen. But if that's you, anybody, if that's you, just get out in the aisle if you can. I know we're out of room and we're working on room now. So, But we want to make sure we're clear. I want to make sure I'm clear. Lord, get it all out. Amen. That time I didn't speak to you. That time I fist bumped you and didn't shake your hand. That time, amen. I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I got to do it too. That time you ran into me and act like you didn't see me. I got to clear my heart from that. You know folks do that. I got to forgive that and get that off. Because I'm not going to let you stop me from seeing Jesus. And I'm not going to let you hinder my prayers. My prayer's going to go through because I'm not carrying anything in my heart like that. Amen. All right, everyone, just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. First, we thank you for your place of worship. Thank you, God, for the open door where we're able to come in and just worship you, praise you, and then hear a word from you. Enjoy music and enjoy lights and theatrics and just be in a wonderful, comfortable place, God. We remember when we were out in the parking lot and they wouldn't let us in the building. And we had church outside in the rain. But we praised you there. And we're going to take advantage of every opportunity to come into the church now. Because you've opened the doors again for us. And so, God, we thank you. We don't want to take that for granted. We thank you for what you've done. And God, right now, we come before you as your people. You know us better than we know our own selves. You know the deep, dark parts of our hearts, God. You said you know the deep things. Father God, you know what is going on in our minds. You know what is triggering our instability, triggering sins, triggering past thoughts, triggering hatred and bitterness and malice and hurt. All the things that have happened to us, God. So right now we come before you, Lord, an open book asking you, God, go to that page where that hurt is. Go to that page where that suffering is, that pain that we endured. Go to that page where that violation took place, that trauma. Go to that page, God, and erase it. Remove it so that the enemy won't use it. Father God, Give us a brand new start. You said if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So make everything new now. No matter what happened to us, God, help us to forgive. Help us, Father God, to let it go. Help us, Father God, to not be stubborn. Help us, Father God, to live free from lust. Help us, Father God, on all of these things, especially fearfulness, to not be fearful of making friends. To not be fearful of forming families. To not be fearful of fellowship. To not be fearful because of what happened to us. Father God, give us a brand new start. And we will be overcomers. And overcome all bitterness. In the name that is above every name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Thank you for freedom from bitterness. No matter what happened to me, it don't matter now. I'm free. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and hug somebody and tell them I'm free from all bitterness. I let it go. Hallelujah. All bitterness. All bitterness. All bitterness. I'm free. Hallelujah. I forgive my mama. I forgive my dad. Forgive my ex-husband, my ex-wife. I forgive my children. I forgive my old pastor. I forgive his wife. Hallelujah. My cousins, my aunties. All of them. I'm not walking around with bitterness. But I'm going to walk in freedom. Bitterness is not going to dictate my decisions. It's not going to change my decision making and cause me to blow it in this life. Hallelujah. 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 